a physician and uh, technical guy for the CIA. So Hal and Kit Green uh, went off to hide somewhere. That's the design that Ingo created. Ingo created a form of remote viewing and named it remote viewing mm -hmm. in a form that is probably one of the most felicitous ways you can do this. That is have a psychic working with an interviewer who will help him along. The interviewer, of course, is blind to the target. And then the viewer who is a friend of everybody, the traveler is a friend of everybody, will go somewhere. So here we are. We're we're going to be sitting in a little shielded room. It's nine o'clock, and I tell Pat, "Okay, Hal has gone somewhere with Kit Green. I have no idea where they've gone. Can you tell me what you're experiencing with regard to where they are?" Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. I never did anything like that. And so this is serial number one. If this fails, this could be the end of remote viewing. Because this is a demo for the contract monitor who's with Hal. So I asked uh, Pat Price, well, you know, Hal has a green uh, Honda car, and they're probably driving out of the parking lot at SRI. And of course, we're far away in a blanked out room, so I have no idea where they're going. And I said, uh, he's driving out of the parking lot to go somewhere. Can you follow the car? And he said, oh, yeah, when I was a police chief, I used to follow the car all the time. I see them going down Middlefield Road, turn to right, right out of SRI, and they're going into some kind of park-like place. And he then went on to describe what he has drawn in the right picture. So there's uh, a square pool of water, about 60 by 90, a round pool of water about 100 feet in diameter. And then there are two towers about 75 feet tall. It's some kind of water purification plant. So he drew the picture on the right. The city picture, which we, of course, didn't have at the time, shows the two pools, shows the round pool, 100 feet in diameter, the rectangular pool, 60 by 90, exactly as Price had drawn this. They got to yeah, remember. The, the drawing on the left is the city's drawing. The drawing on the right is Pat Price's drawing. And on yes. top is the photograph of the complex. Is that right? And that we did not have those pictures at the time because we, we didn't know where they were going to gonna go. So we never had bothered to get pictures from the city. So this was a complete double blind experiment. We had no idea where they were. And the interviewer's job here was to jolly Pat Price along. So when he says, I don't see anything, I don't know what you're talking about, I had to then invent what to tell him to do next. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's really from my training as a magician that I could sort of create, why don't you follow the car? You're familiar with the car. Why don't you see where the, where the green car is going with Hal and Pat? And that turned out to be something he could do. Wow. He talked about the two towers. And I show the two towers in the upper photograph, which I got 10 years later celebrating the centenary of the city of Palo Alto. Those towers no longer are at the swimming pool complex. But Price looked at the pool in current terms, drew the rectangular and the round pool, and then looked back 75 years and drew the two towers that were right in front of the pool. See, the photograph with the two, with the two towers is from the city showing what Rigonada Park looked like 75 years ago. So oh, the wow. towers were there in the photo, but you can't see the pools. But uh, Price drew the towers <coughs> in his remote viewing. So he saw the towers and he saw the pools and drew everything extremely accurate. So this is number one. And so even, in, even right. here, there's a temporal dislocation of some sort, I guess. In Absolutely. His remote he's looking, he's looking 
Price never saw this picture. Price died two years later, or three years yeah. later. So he never got. Price said that's an important question you have. Price never got feedback for the towers. Mm -hmm. So we know that feedback in many of the experiments I'm going to describe, it's unclear whether the viewer is looking at the place they're really hiding mm -hmm. or is looking at their feedback. This is a case where Price was absolutely not looking at the feedback because we didn't know about the tower, nor did we have the picture at the time he was describing the tower. So this is a case. Quite remarkable. Now, so so I, this is a new discovery for me. Because this is an example of where Price was describing what was there and what was there 75 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he got feedback for none of that. He got feedback for the two swimming pools, but not for the towers. Not because those did not exist any longer. There's another Pat Price remote view that uh, this is not what he drew. This is from a CIA drawing, but he was remote viewing. This is a Soviet location, correct? That's right. So yeah. CIA is still an SRI. So you really did great with the swimming pool. Here are the geographical coordinates of something we'd like you to draw. Mm -hmm. or see or describe and this i so we go back into our little shielded room uh i tell pat here coordinates i don't know what they pertain to a little slip of paper and he said well i'm lying on a building and the sun is shining and this giant gantry crane is rowing back and forth over my body now a gantry crane is a very specialized piece of knowledge that the crane he drew here, four wheel, eight, eight wheel crane rolling on tracks, is mm -hmm. what he drew on my right. Yeah. That's exactly a gantry crane. And of course, nobody knew what his target was, but he experienced being in the build, on the building where the crane was rolling overhead. And he drew that remarkably accurate picture of an eight-wheel crane on tracks. And he said there are four wheels on either side of the tracks. Yeah. So we then went to, we handed that in, like handing in the homework for the teacher, and they gave us feedback. That is, a Price drew a picture on the right, and they then showed us the picture on the left. So that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. not, not too shabby. Yeah, right. Um, too. Wow. What what are they doing in that building? So we right. went back the next day. You mean this here? Uh, no, that's the overall picture oh, of yes, the building. Sorry. The the one I have, uh, the, that just before that, the crane there. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, go go ahead. The, the, you showed a picture of of a sphere inside. What they're doing is they're building this sphere. Price says, I can see they're welding together a 60-foot sphere. They're having trouble welding it because the metal is very thick. And uh, let me draw the gores that they're building. Now, gore is, again, a special word. Uh, women know about gores from a four-gore skirt and uh, go, or an orange peel slice and he drew the orange peel version mm -hmm. he said they're building this 60 foot sphere welding the gores together and that's exactly what they were doing they're having trouble welding it there it is be, be, this is it this is a 60 foot sphere from from that article so probably, uh, and you can see that it's made of these uh, gore shaped things so Price was able to look inside the building and describe and draw very accurately just what they were doing. So that was good for another five years support from the CIA because there's no way that he could know what was inside. Right. Well, I mean, we could just go on and on about your time at SRI. I mean, you have stories about Ingo Swan. You actually sent us an image of Ingo's drawing of Jupiter. We'll just show that here for people. I don't know if they have uh, many people have seen this. Can you talk a little bit about what Ingo? Well, we had a contract monitor from NASA who was coming to look at our ESP teaching machine 
And while we were doing that, Ingo walked in and he said, hey, Ingo, we're just getting ready to launch a new Pioneer 2 to Jupiter. Can you tell us, Ingo, uh, is there anything new that we're going to see when we get to Jupiter? Uh, after 